There are many paths to getting started with HVAC. One of the least known paths is getting started without going to school. Now I need to clarify, when I say not going to school, I don't mean not learning. You still have to learn. There's a lot of stuff you have to learn. But the least known path is getting started without going to school. This means getting started on your job and learning as you go, learning on your own. I did a poll with the HVAC Facebook school group, and on that poll, the second place was getting started without going to school. EPA 608, learn on the job with self-study at home, got second place with 81 volts. On top of that, somebody added another poll option. Visit your local HVAC contractor and get to busting your peep hands-on from day one with 20 votes. So 101 people recommended getting started in HVAC without going to school. I find that quite interesting. But that's also the method that I learned. Now again, I need to clarify, there's still gonna be a lot of learning to be done, but that learning's gonna fall on you. The great thing is you can let your curiosity guide you. How does this work? I don't understand what's happening here. And use that curiosity to learn as you go. Now, there's some things that we need to take into account. I did a poll also asking, if you didn't go to school, what would you require somebody to know or have to get started? We'll go over that list at the end of this video. But what we saw over and over was being on time, willingness to learn, and people that really cared about this trade. So if you have the drive that you want to learn this, and you're on time, and you want to help, and you're showing that you're wanting to learn this, that goes a long ways. A lot of people said they'd rather have somebody that didn't have any school because they'd rather train them their methods and their ways first. And somebody else said it was easier to train somebody than retrain somebody out of their bad habits. Another common one was having a positive attitude. Again, being willing to learn and willing to help and willing to work hard. These are some very common things that we saw. People said they could teach you how the mechanics work. They could teach you the technical side, but they couldn't teach you how to care. They couldn't teach you how to be on time. These are things you have to have on your own. So if you have those things already, you're ahead of the game. Now, some other things you can do to get started with the trade, some things that can help are things like getting your EPA 608 certification. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go to school for that. You'll see schools charging $8,000 for a three-month program and $20,000 for a 10 and a half month program. And really the biggest thing that they're getting is the EPA 608 certification. In the description below, I'm gonna put several different methods for you learning your EPA on your own, at home. Right now, one of those methods has a free EPA 608 test. I don't know how long that's gonna be there, but it's quite interesting. You should probably jump on that right now. In the description below, I'm gonna put several different ways for you to get your EPA at home on your own. These range anywhere from right now temporarily being free up to $300 per test. And let's think, $300 per test, even if you had to take that test twice, that's $600. That is significantly lower than your other options. Even a quick course of $8,000 and you get your same EPA test as you're gonna get with that course, that really says a lot. And the EPA doesn't mean you know how to do any of this work. The EPA only says that you know the laws that you're not going to vent refrigerant and you know the recovery levels, things like this. It doesn't mean you know how to do HVAC. Just like a driver's license says you can legally drive, but really it doesn't mean you know how to drive. And we know that we've all seen those people out there. So the EPA is a great way to start, but it also says that you've applied yourself, that you've taken some initiative on your own, that you can now work with refrigerants. That does have a benefit. Some other things that you can do to help with this is also take your OSHA 10 certification. It's 10 hours of an online course, ranging anywhere from $20 to $60, and it's 10 hours of answering multiple choice questions and watching little videos. It's not a difficult course, but it does make you think about safety, different safety environments, especially if you've never worked in the trades before, it gets you understanding ladder safety and all of these basic little concepts. Having that employers like because it takes some of the responsibility off of them. It says that you've taken the initiative to understand safety on your own, and that can go a long ways. You can also look at a Nate Ready to Work certification. Low cost certification, it doesn't mean you understand air conditioning, it means you understand some of the basics. It's a non-proctored test, and you can take that test a few times on your own, and it doesn't mean that you're gonna be any better, it just says that you've taken some initiative to learn some stuff. Now, I personally recommend you understand the refrigeration cycle. I think the refrigeration cycle is the most important for HVAC, understanding how HVAC is working entirely. If you're gonna get started in the heating season, understanding how a gas furnace and a heat pump works goes a long ways. Also, some things that are very beneficial is studying tools, the different types of tools we use. Even if you don't have these tools right now, 
understanding what these tools are and the names of these tools. So when somebody says, go get this tool, you know what they're talking about. You can get that tool and bring it back. If somebody says, go get a jug of R22, you know exactly what to look for. You know what they're talking about. Those things can help. So that vocabulary makes a big difference. There's also some other things of understanding a little bit of electrical and meters. The catch is, if you wait till you understand it all, then you will be waiting forever. The idea is understand some of those basics and go and get started. Even if you're going to school, I recommend still getting a job before you understand it all. Get a job and now as you're going to school, you're learning and understanding how this stuff works in an actual day-to-day -day environment. Think about having to remember stuff for 10 and a half months. As 10 and a half months go by, you're trying to remember all this information, or two years, or four years. Are you gonna remember what you learned in day one of that class that you need to know when you're working in a field? No, it's just too much information to retain. However, if you're working in the trade every single day and you're applying this knowledge every single day and then you're learning the theory on your own or online or any other method, it helps put those building blocks together. And now you're learning and you're being immersed with it. So you're applying that knowledge that you're learning. Even in a short program, like a three month program, a crash course, three month program, three months is not very long to teach you a massive amount of stuff in HVAC. But I find that students still don't remember what happened in the second week. There's so much to remember and then they're still doing their day to day jobs and their day to day family lives. But what I did find a big difference was a student that was working in the trade every day. They're doing this stuff constantly and now they're understanding the theory and how it applies. It made a huge difference in the learning process. So I recommend it getting started in the trade as soon as you can, whenever you can. Another nice benefit of getting a job in the trade is you can see if you're gonna actually like that job. I've seen students that were saddled with an $8,000 to $20,000 loan. They're having to pay back this loan, they get into the trade and they simply do not like it at all. But now they're having to pay off this loan. So getting into the trade and understanding it and doing the work, understanding that this is what you're gonna to want to do can really make a big difference. Not only with the quicker learning process, to also see if this is gonna be something you're going to enjoy doing before you spend the money to go to school. Now let's take a look at the HVAC School Group Facebook post of what they would require getting started for HVAC without going to school. With the HVAC School Group, I made a post, what would you want a beginner to know and have before hiring them? Specifically, somebody who did not go to school. Your answer will be used in an upcoming video. So of that, we got 76 replies. So we're just gonna start at the top and roll through these. The very first one we got was drive. Have drive, drive to learn, drive to work through this career. Driver's license, having a driver's license, being able to use the company van to go get parts, to go get supplies. Joshua wrote, driver's license, pays attention and shows up. Justin wrote, willing and being able to learn, ability to read a tape measure, simple addition and subtraction, and the ability to read, write, but they don't have to be a spelling bee champion. Positive attitude follows directions and asks questions. Dustin wrote, how to use their hand tools and their own tool bag. Bill wrote, curiosity, and I love that one because curiosity is one of the best teaching tools. How does this work? Being curious and then researching it is a great learning method. David wrote manners, and that is very important because we're gonna be dealing with customers. Dealing with different customers and being in their home is very important, so having the manners to deal with them and also the manners of who you're working with, not just taking their tools or leaving their tools behind, understanding how to respect who you're working with. Those things can go a very long ways. Rick wrote, if they have the right attitude, I can teach them aptitude. Jason wrote, being on time, Ryan wrote, the basic knowledge of electrical circuits if going into the service side. And soon we're gonna be adding videos for electrical class, so stay tuned. Blake wrote, attitude, attitude, attitude. And Blake, I am right with you, I agree 100%. The attitude is so important. No matter what you're doing, how you view it is gonna be important. You could be in an attic and you're sweating to death, but thinking about, hey, I'm learning something, I'm doing something, and I'm building my skill, that is so important. Attitude is everything. Being positive, being on time, so important. Alvin wrote, can they show up on time? Just get there. Tanner wrote, have the mindset of how to learn. Most important skill you can have, in my opinion. And I, Tanner, I can't agree with you more. Having that mindset to learn, wanting to learn, wanting to grow, so important. Not just, oh, I got a job, I want you to train me. Being able to learn, wanting to learn, being hungry for it, learning on your own. JT wrote, basic math skills, general hand tools, and what they are used for. We were all beginners, so how and when to ask for help is something to learn at the beginning that can be carried throughout your career. 
Brian wrote, I train new hires all the time without experience. And my biggest requirement is just someone that has motivation to learn. If you strive to go to the job to learn, any tech can become a great one. Robert wrote, I would want them to know how to use a meter and also to have a volt ohm meter, preferably one with an amp clamp. Jason wrote, a desire to listen and learn. Someone who takes their career in their own hands and doesn't wait to be taught, but goes out and learns on their own. This is a career, not just a job. Adam wrote, an open mind, willingness to learn, a good work ethic, EPA 608 Universal, or be able to get it within four weeks. Everything else can be picked up along the way. Chris wrote, we hire soft skills and teach technical. If they know the business end of a screwdriver, that helps. Mark wrote, Honestly, the refrigeration cycle would make teaching 100 times easier. Darren wrote, have common sense and be able to think on your feet. Be a sponge, absorb anything and everything I tell you. Make this a career, not a job. Read, watch videos on your own time. Most importantly, show up on time with an open mind and be polite to the customers. Steve wrote, work ethic and self pride. Tracy wrote, sequence of operation of a heat pump and a gas furnace. Alex Leeson, the ability to absorb what I'm teaching. Don't make me feel like I'm babysitting. Tony wrote, aptitude, attitude, and ethics. Santiago wrote, never half-ass a job, is what I was taught since day one. Mark added, how well do they accept criticism? A self-starter, mechanical aptitude. Bill added, be humble and remember it, never know everything. Joe added, righty tighty lefty Lucy and how to hold the darn flashlight still. Ryan added, show up on time and sober. Be willing to learn for years. Always try to apply what you learned. Ricardo added, hungry to learn on time and their heart is into this trade. Thomas added, mechanically inclined. Being able to work a screwdriver. If you've ever taken something apart and put it back together, it's a big step. Also automotive. If you've ever taken a starter out and put it back in on your car, those are mechanical skills that are very beneficial. Chris added, actually prefer no experience. That way they haven't picked up bad habits. And with good teaching, they learn correctly. Jeremy Smith, who is a master with supermarket refrigeration added, I need someone who will show up on time every day. I need someone who will work their shift and more if that extra work is needed. I need someone who can take instruction and who isn't afraid to ask questions and be wrong about things because they're going to be a lot. Other than that, I don't care what they know. I'll teach them. A reply to that was almost would rather they know very little or have little experience, less bad habits to get them to correct. Jim added, if they ever have fixed anything on their car, that's a good start. Use tools, be able to read a service manual, be polite, show up and climb a ladder. Ricardo added measuring tape, a six way screwdriver and a flashlight. Christopher Hughes added a desire to actually be in HVAC. Chad said willingness to learn. Marco honestly asked them who they watch on YouTube. Matthew added, know what basic hand tools are and how to use them. Don't even care if you have them. Jessica added, I can tell you what I knew when I started. Absolutely nothing, but I was willing to learn. Paul wrote, early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. Global Warming and Cooling added, willing and committed to be a janitor, cleaning units, or a core to longevity. Gary added, planning. Timothy added how to use basic HVAC hand tools in the stay off your phone. Steve wrote, have tools and a can do attitude. Richard added the willing to learn. Michael said a hunger to learn. Robert added the fact that they don't know and the willingness to ask. Justin replied to that adding the difference between ignorance and stupidity is that stupidity is not knowing and not caring, doing it anyways. There is nothing wrong with ignorance. It is simply the lack of knowledge. It becomes stupidity when you try to do it anyways. I'm ignorant on brain surgery, but it would be stupid to try. Dustin added, if you're talking for a green helper, a driver's license, pass a drug test, pass a background check, have reliable transportation, have strong work ethics, be able to show up on time and put in a solid eight to 10 hours and be trainable. Stan added, character, integrity, and attitude. Skills are developed. The other three are hard to teach or break. Neil Camparetto added, I'd like them to have integrity and know how to problem solve. 
Kirk added mechanical aptitude. The great Carter Stanfield, an HVAC book author, chimed in and added the ability to read and follow instructions and basic math and literacy. My friend Monty said, stay organized, be able to follow instructions and directions. Safety, okay to climb ladders, drug free, open to learn and absorb, be a sponge, and last but not least, common sense. Greg added, good attitude. One can teach skill, but you can't teach attitude. You can see this whole list, there's a lot of people that supported the ability to get started in the trade without going to school. The big ones was being on time, attitude, and a willing or a hunger to learn this trade. Those are some of the top things I pulled out of there. Being able to learn this trade is about you. How much do you want it? What's your desire for it? If you're just going to expect somebody else to teach it to you, it's going to be a very long uphill battle. But if you're hungry and want to learn and you're willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and continue to put effort in your own time, it's going to go a very long ways. Now, I also recommend to never stop learning.